What's up guys, Black Wars here and welcome back to another video and today we're back on Pro Cycling Manager 2019 for the 13th episode of the Team Sunweb career mode. In today's episode we will finish uh, the classics of the uh, month of April with Paris-Roubaix, the Amstel Gold Race, the Flesh Wallon and finally Liège-Bastogne-Liège. Um, three classics that I could win, uh, being the three Ardennes classic. One classic in which I'm going to be quite poor, Paris-Roubaix, so we'll get that first out of the way. Um, the Dwarf Turkey is in the middle, it'll be another episode, uh, like I did with the um, Paris Vasco, well no sorry, with It's Video Basque Country and the Belgian Classics. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's go to Compiègne for 261 kilometers of pure hell for both the riders and myself. And we're on the way for Paris-Roubaix, the race I probably hate the most in the entire calendar and if at this point you still don't know that I don't like cobbles then, well, I mean, you just haven't been following me for quite a while then. Um, but, yeah, cobbles on my strongest point. Uh, if you've watched the previous episode, no, uh, two episodes ago, sorry. I, I, I'm just bad at it. Like, I'm bad. I, I want it, like, I'm, I'm doing, like, other career modes, um, not on YouTube, though, but just for, like, me. I won Parobe once, because I had to attack, like, at 80 kilometers before the end. With Wout van Aert, Mike Tennyson, and uh, Amun Grondaliansen. Then at this point, no one was able to catch me. But without a strong team, I don't think I can do anything. Uh, despite all that, Michael Matthews is on a plus three today. Uh, a potential, oh sorry, no, an actual um, 80 mount, uh, 80 cobbles, 79 hills, 79 sprints. I mean, if, if it all goes. Like, if, if no one attacks, which everyone will do, because it's PCM, but we could be in with a good shout of, like, try to win, hopefully, like, at least do so. If I can do a top 10, if, I just, like, not do what I did on the Ronde, which was outside of the top 20, or the E3 Rollback outside of the top 20. That's all I'm hoping. Like, a top 10 would be great. Uh, there's already some attacks here and there. There's uh, Clément Carizé for Israel Cycling Academy, Diego Ulissi for UAE, Christopher Alvorsen for Ineos, Dimitri Grusdev for Astana, Mark Seller for Movistar, uh, Sam Bioli for Mitchelton Scott, Marcel Sieberg for Bahrain Merida, Jonas Rickert for Corandon Circus, Mark Renshaw for Dimension Data, Kevin Jonietz for Groupama FDG. Uh, and for now, it seems like we're... We've got the breakaway right now. Maybe Nikita Stalov trying to make a move. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, but we're not going to send anyone in the break. I'm just going to check like who are my like leaders. Uh, well, no, sorry, not leaders, but like teammates actually. So Nika Santos on 65. Soren Kraf. I would have loved to have um, Kraf Anderson on like a good day, but no. Nope. Roy Kavas, Mark Hershey, Kesbol is injured, but he's on good day as well. Okay, so I'll be Mark Hershey, my last teammate. It's not gonna be easy, but I'm gonna try my best. Right, we've started the first few couple sectors um, in the first part of the race. Uh, we're not halfway through yet, and uh, there's no, there's not much tarmac back like until the end. It's mainly cobbled. Um, I was trying to think about a, a strategy on how to like do the race. Um, I can't do what I did with my Jumbo Visma save because I had good teammates that could actually maybe like win Paroubet if you're good. So like it was easy to destroy the peloton. I don't think I can destroy every anyone with Mark Hirschi and, and Roy Curvis. So I either wait in the peloton with Michael Matthews or I'll try to jump on like a breakaway if there's an attack at one point. Uh, I don't know yet, like, it, it's it's tough because I have no clue what to do. Usually, like, if I'm doing a sprint stage or a mountain stage, I always have an idea of how I'm going to manage the stage. But here, it's just completely blank in my mind, like, it's a canvas, there's nothing on it. So, yeah, I'd, I don't know what I'm going to do, uh, but... Y you never know. M maybe with some luck, I, I can try and like gr grab a grab a win. Um, but yeah, for now, breakaways four minutes ahead. There's some people getting dropped here and there, some punctures uh, and some crashes. For now, uh, we 
seem to be quite lucky. Uh, I'm not going to push my chance too much. Um, but yeah, 130k to go. We just are halfway through the race now. And Michael Matthews is still on a very good shape. The Peloton just finished the sector of Habelui, which means that if you know your Paris-Roubaix, the next sector is none other than the Trouet de Rambert, the one of the hardest sectors in the race. It's 100 kilometers away from the finish line, so you can't win Paris-Roubaix if you are good in this sector, but you sure as hell can lose it. Uh, I'm gonna pace from the front with uh, Roy Carvus. I don't want to like be in any form of incident. Uh, so that's why I'm just gonna like pace. Soren Carvonsen is already in third place, losing some of his health already, uh, which isn't good. Someone overtook me, that's Eduard Tuns. Uh, I'm guessing the frame rate is a bit dodgy right now, but that's because we're going over cobblestones and the just camera is shaking a lot. Um, but okay, Roy Carvus has made it through the main gap, the main group. 67 riders left in the peloton. And. We've got six guys here. Uh, we're gonna get water with Nikas Arndt while he's at the back already. Uh, damn, Arno Demar is here. Okay. Alright, let's let's try to continue like this pace. Uh, but Carvas is about to die, so I don't know what I'm gonna do. Okay, sit rep. With um, 64 kilometers to go now, we have a 34 men group uh, with Mark Hirschi and Michael Matthews as our two last riders. We're about to catch the breakaway, um, well at least we just managed to get Marcel Seberg. There's only three guys now at the front um, in Dimitri Grusdev, Clément Carizet and Sam Bewley. The gap is 40 seconds over a peloton led by Danny Van Poppel and Matt Pedersen. Um, Michael Matthews is still good, so I, I, I mean, I'm guessing that's a good thing. I'm going to stop pacing for a second uh, while we do the sector of Orchi. There's an attack on the left hand side, that's, um, that, that's Terpstra, Sagan and Van Mark. Okay, we need to pace. We need to accelerate, because otherwise, we're very much fucked. Why do you follow an attack by Magnus Court Nielsen? Like, come on. Allow it. Thank you, they've, they've all stopped. Uh, but that managed to destroy my Mark Hershey. Um, that's quite sad. Breakaway, Cor Nielsen, Hosler, and Boasnagin are still in the group up ahead now. Uh, I'm not the one who has to pace. I, I'm, I can chill in the wheels because I'm not meant to be there with Mark Hirschi. So you know what? Just do your thing, Peloton. Uh, can Matthews like go much closer than Hirschi in the wheel? Thank you. Uh, there's another sector. I think the rhythm is going to increase a lot in that sector. That's what they usually do. Uh, so I'm going to be very careful of any attacks or any sudden uh, change of rhythm. For example, an acceleration like uh, what Nils Polit is currently doing at the front with Nikita Pstra, Peter Sagan. Okay, we're still here with Michael Matthews. Dropping a few positions because I don't want to attack uh, because that's just completely dumb. Uh, and we should make the cut. Yes, we do. Good, perfect. We're at the front of the group. 17 men left. Michael Matthews is still here. And there's 50 kilometers to go. We've just went past one of the places where the peloton use, like, usually rests. Um, but there's been attacks at this point, so I've been like a bit dumb. Um, the, the, yeah, I got fucked by the AI. Uh, Steuven, Van Mark, Polit, Christoph, Terpstra, Van Aert in the group. Uh, Michael Matthews is here though, nonetheless, is in the wheel of John Degenkolb. Uh, who appears, is he attacking? No, 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 he's not. He's not even the leader of his team. Um, Raoul Van Aert is in my wheel right now. If I can, like, not get overtaken, that'd be absolutely brilliant. 24k to go. Uh, there's not a lot of cobbles left. So, for now, the more I stay up ahead, the better it is for me. Still 21 riders, though. There's an attack. That's Nikita Astra, followed by Jasper Steuven. I'm not going to get surprised for once. Look at me being vigilant and all that. Jeez. Um, Terpstra, Steuven, Matthews. Oh, everyone is attacked. Uh, no one's getting dropped except Alberto Betiol and Sebastian Langevelt. Uh, we're going to follow Yves Lampart. Come on, Michael. You've got this. Who's attacking? Jasper Steuven. Easy. That, that's, that's nothing for you, Michael. You've got this. Confirm Pével. Former to last sector. Well, hard sector. 
of Paris Roubaix. Don't attack now. Don't attack now. What Von Art? I swear to God, I hate you. I'm gonna follow Von Mark then. Can you not stop, please, and go to the sprint? I'd love that. I'd, I'd happily take a sprint, mate. Come on, just hold on. Hold on, Michael. You're nearly there. You're nearly there. Come on, you've got this. You've got this. Oh, Van Mark's down. Seb Van Mark is down. Jasper Stoven is down as well. There's a group of four going up ahead. And we're not in that group. Because we're not the best. Who's ahead? Wout Van Aert, Yves Lampard, Niels Polit, and Mathieu Van Der Poel. The group Van Avermaet, Christophe Sagan trying to come back. I'm being slightly blocked by Dylan Van Baal. Uh, who can... Oh. Oh, that's why. He got a puncture. Okay. Uh, we're going to try and stay in that group. I'm, I'm not going to pace to come back on the boys ahead. Uh, that's not my job. There's an attack. That's uh, Seb Von Mark trying to attack once again. Up ahead. There, the relays are quite quite good actually. Uh, don't know if we'll be able to catch them. We probably will run for 5th position here. But I'll, I'll happily take 5th. I'll happily take 5th. Attacks nonetheless from Seb Van Mark trying to uh, well come back on the main group. Final cobble sector attack by Niels Polit in the main group, followed by Van der Poel, Vlampart, and Van Aert. They're all very strong. All four of them are incredibly strong. Um, I'm not. Why am I pacing with Michael Matthews? What am I doing? Word Van Aert dropping a bit. Word Van Aert is dropping. Ooh, watch out. Watch out for, Va for Word Van Aert. I'm not convinced he's gonna make it. Nils Polit as well struggling. It's going to be Van Der Poel or Yves Lampard. It's a battle of the national champions. Will the, the Belgian champion beat the Dutch one or vice versa? Meanwhile, in the peloton, we're approaching the well, entering the velodrome right now as I'm speaking. Um, why are they attacking now? I do not know. We're going to take the will of Peter Sagan, but we're lacking energy. Van Der Poel or Yves Lampard. Matthews is dead. Matthews is fully dead. There is a f severe lack of energy for Michael Matthews here. Yeah, I'm fucked. I I'm last of the group. I'm going to be last of the group. But the win, Paris-Roubaix, is won by Mathieu Van Der Poel, the leader of Corendon Circus, wins ahead of Yves Lampard. Peter Sagan, I'm probably going to be last of my... Yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm last of the group. I'm not even in the top 10. I'm going to be 12th of my... Nah, that's, that's quite sad. But I'll take that. I'll ha I mean... It's not the best result I could have ha hoped for, but I'll happily take 12th, uh, considering d d like how the race went. Impressive win by Mathieu Van Der Poel nonetheless. He was just way too strong for me. Um, I, I think maybe if I hadn't followed Pete Sagan and them lot when like... If I hadn't paced in the last sector already, like that, that was one of my mistakes. I paced and I never should have done that. Um... Because I lost a lot of energy doing so. I could have reached for a top 10, I think. Um, top 5, maybe not, because I was badly placed. And if I had to come back at the front, I would have lost energy. Uh, but I think the top 10 was reachable. Uh, nonetheless, big win by Van der Poel, though. Uh, and I just want to understand why why is in Ineos on. They've, they brought in Tao Guggenhardt, Sebastian Henao, and Kenny Lissand. Like, why? Just... Like, bring guys that can do cobbles in, instead of them. Like, when when I fin when Van Der Poel won, he now had 53 kilometers left to do. That's that's quite sad. Um, but yeah, Paris-Roubaix is done. Next up, Amstel Gold Race. Amstel Gold Race time. Uh, we're finally doing classics that I enjoy. Um, Soren Kravansen, Wilco Kellerman, Mark Hirschi, Sam Omen, Nicolas Roche, Jan Bakelans and Roy Kervis. We're going to try and at least, at least win. Yeah, if we can. If Mathieu Van Der Poel wins this, knowing that he won Paris-Roubaix, I'm stopping PCM and I'm moving to cricket. So I better win. Following our 12th position on Paris-Roubaix, we need to redeem ourselves on the classics. And that comes with a very good performance on the Amstel Gold Race. A classic that I've never lost on PCM 2019. And uh, I don't intend to lose it today. We've got our leadership, uh, our leader, sorry, Alderby, Wilco Kellerman, or Soren Kraft Anderson. I think it's probably going to be Soren. Um, it just feels like it. 
There's already some attacks in uh, the first kilometers. That's Salvatore Puccio, followed by Yukia Arashiro, Clément Chevrier, and Kun Decourt. Uh, the peloton is led by Sasha Modolo right now. Is any is there all the big leaders? Yeah, yeah, everyone's here. Good. Uh, we're not going to send anyone in the break. You've seen my lineup. Uh, oh, actually, we could also use Mark Hirschi as our leader. I forgot about him. But Mark Hirschi could be our leader. Uh, the thing is, Zoran can sprint, knowing that this, the flat finish now really like helps the sprinter. Okay, I need to see. I need to see what I'm going to do, uh, but we'll do that during the race. Second crash of the day for us, after having lost, uh, well, lost. Sam Oman had fallen, uh, but he managed to come back. Oh, Tadej Pogokar is out of the, oh wow. Pogokar is withering from the race, that's disappointing. But yeah, Sam Oman had crashed, now it's up to Wilco Kelderman. To uh, taste the, um, the 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 Dutch um, tarmac, he's gonna come back in the peloton though. But there's been plenty of crashes with this uh, treacherous weather. Uh, Kudkowski was down at one point. Uh, I know um, Tao Gigenart was down. Pretty sure Valverde has been down as well. Uh, but that's already the uh, third. Uh, I think is that the th yeah, it's the um, third withdrawing withdrawal. Sorry of the day. For Tadej Pogokar following uh, uh, Tobias Ludwigsen and uh, Adrien Garel. There's 150 kilometers to go in uh, this Amsel Gold race, who's already caused a lot of damage, and we are not even close to the main difficulties yet. Second wheel's roll of the day for the Vital Concept team. It's now Johan Bago who's gone. Rigoberto Uran has crashed. A lot of riders are falling right now. I'm not gonna lie. Philippe Gilbert is down. Philippe Gilbert is down with Yanni Morscon and Rigoberto Uran. And Enrico Berto Uran is out of the Amsel Gold Race. Uh, I don't know if he was targeting the Giro, but he's not anymore. Uran out of the Amsel Gold Race. That's okay. Wow, a lot of things are happening. If you're wondering why Curvis is dropped, uh, he he fell whilst giving water to the guys. So yeah, the, that's that's already happened. Another fall uh, fall for uh, EF. That's now um, Jonathan Caicedo. Okay, you need to be very careful in those in those roads. Really careful. Crash, Mark Hirschi. Mark Hirschi is down. Mark Hirschi has fallen with a uh, Chai Feng. And it's the end of the road for Feng. Mark Hirschi is still able to, to, to be on the back though. Uh, he now needs to come back on the peloton. Thankfully, the pace isn't that high. We're still quite far from the, from, like, the end of the race. So uh, it should be an easy task for Hirschi to come back. There he goes, back in the main peloton for our Swiss uh, rider. There's echelons. Echelons have been made. Um, I think... No, okay, everyone's going to come back. Oh, actually, I think people... Yeah, people will come back. Uh, but a lot of riders co in the incident because there's been a crash in the Kobag. Um, Kitkowski was down. Roy Kervis once again was down. But, I mean, that's not new now. Um, but, yeah, like... There's so many crashes, so many crashes. Floris de Tier as well was down. Uh, I guess we'll have to see the bright side and Roy Kovac already at the back, meaning that it's going to be quicker to give water to the boys. I hope so, at least. Just under 40 kilometers to go as we uh, now start the Kreuzberg for uh, for the peloton. The breakaway is still leading two minutes ahead for uh, Chevrier, Puccio, Arashiro, Kundekort. There hasn't been anything since the rain stopped uh, stopped falling. So, like, no crashes, nothing, which is kind of sad. Uh, I, I liked crashes, uh, especially when they were not mine. Like, when Ishi, Kelderman, Samoman were down, didn't like it. Valverde already at the front, though. Attack by... Wait, what? Is that an attack by Kukowski? Ah, there we go. Said no crashes. You just had to say it. Crashes. I mean, n no one interesting. Uh, I'll allow it. Anthony Roux being the highest rated guy, but it's still a crash nonetheless. Uh, we've been pacing in the, um, the this climb. I, I don't know what that was, uh, but yeah, we paced through it. Why is Ke what happened? Why is Kelderman there if Kraft Anderson is ahead of him? Where's Hershey? Here. Okay. So Kraft Anderson in the wheel of Kelderman. Okay. And Mark Hirschi, you're gonna have to come back. Uh, 
I'm gonna stop pacing one like a second with Sam Omen, come back with Calderman. Okay. We, we we struggled, but but we we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, 23 kilometers left. We're uh, five kilometers away from the bottom of the Coburg, and uh, hopefully we're gonna be able to like make some gaps with Sam Omen and win with Soren Carfanson. We're in the Coburg. There's an attack on the left. That's Emmanuel Buchmann. Uh, we're immediately gonna try and cover that off uh, by accelerating with Sam Omen. We've done so. Quite brilliantly actually, Samoman can now stop his work, he's finished for the day. Nico Roche has been dropped, um, fine by me. 15k to go, there is not a single actual hill uh, that can make differences now. It's gonna be a sprint and uh, whether anyone's gonna attack or not. Remco Evenepoel in the wheel of Soren Graf Anderson as we approach the uh, Gullehemmerberg. I don't know if that pronounced that correctly. I don't think I did. Uh, so sorry. Bacalon still leading the way. Kiedkowski is there. Mathieu van der Poel is there. Julian Lafilippe is there. Valverde is there. Everyone is there. The only one missing is the almighty Nicolas Roche. I'm kidding. Uh, Michael. Oh, Michael Woods is there, actually. Okay, Michael Woods has been dropped. Uh, is that an attack on the left? I think it is. We're gonna follow that. We're gonna follow the attack of Kiedkowski. Formolo, Tim Wellens, Van Der Poel, Valverde, and then Kelderman, Hershey, Graf Anderson. And probably Alaphilippe, yeah. Julien Alaphilippe is there. 9.2k to go. I don't see how this can finish in a different way than a sprint. Because there isn't a single hill tough enough to make gaps. The uh, Bemelerberg isn't, it's just not steep enough. 24 riders are gonna try to win. Probably 22 because Kelderman and Omen won't be able to win it, nor would uh, Jan Bakelans, who has now dropped. 6k to go. Wilco Kelderman still leading the way for Mark Hirsch and Soren Graf Anderson. Impressive work by, um, by Wilco, our leader on the Tour de France, if I'm correct, if I know my plannings. There we go. Kelderman sprinting 99 now towards uh, the line. <coughs> Uh, is it still in Valkenburg? I don't know. 3.2k. Peter Seri in the will of Soren Graf Anderson. Not sure about that move. Schachmann coming back on the right hand side with David Formolo and Mathieu Van Der Poel. The sprint is now launched. Mark Hirschi with Soren Graf Anderson in the wheel. Graf Anderson makes the left, uh, takes the left turn in first place. He does take the second left turn in first as well. Can he hold on to the line? Soren Graf Anderson. Yes, he can. He's won Milano San Remo and the Amstel Gold Race. Brilliant job by the Danish rider. Valverde and Alaphilippe complete the podium with Formolo, Kedkowski, Van der Poel, Mollema, Mark Hershey, Michael Weigwen and Dylan Tons to round up the top 10. Solid. Solid work. I like that. I like that. Good. We take the win with Soren Graf Anderson. He hasn't won a lot this season, but he sure won great races. Soren Graf Anderson wins the Amstel Gold Race. Uh, he won He won the Kettlevans Great Ocean Road Race, the Amstel, a stage of the Insula Basque Country, and Milan de San Remo. Impressive, impressive work by Zoran Graf Anderson. Mark Hirschi brings him a very nice 8th position for uh, the 20 year old Swissman. Van der Poel 6th. Yeah, you can win Paro but you can't win this. Haha, <laughs> you're so bad. Please sign in my team next year. But uh, yeah, we take the win with Zoran Graf Anderson. That's good stuff, but uh, it'll be much tougher to do the same thing on the Flesh Wallon. Third stage, well, third race of the video, should I say. Uh, La Flèche Wallon, as Soren Graf Anderson has just hit his fitness peak at the best possible moment. Um, we're gonna go in the, the first uh, Belgian Arden Classic with Soren Graf Anderson as our leader. Wilco Kelderman, Marc Hirschi, Sam Oman, Nicolas Roche, Jan Bakelons, and Johannes Frolenga will be here to uh, help the Danish towards hopefully another win. Uh, even though it's much harder to win La Flèche Wallon than it is to win the Amstel Gold Race. Like, the Amstel Gold Race might be the easiest classic to win with Milano San Remo. La Flèche Wallen requires a m more skill and mainly a better climber, which, I mean, Soren Graf is not the best climber there's ever been, but surely I can do something. La Flèche Wallen is on the way. Uh, Soren Graf Anderson is on the plus one only, sadly, which brings him uh, to an 78 mountain nonetheless. 
so I'll, I'll happily take that. Kelderman uh, is on a good day as well. Uh, only Samerman is quite poor. Mark Hirsch, you know, again, he can be our co-leader today and uh, potentially our leader if anything has uh, to happen to Zoran. 76 mountains, 79 hills. Actually, he's much more suited to like do well uh, on um, on La Flèche Wallon compared to like Zoran. I'll have to see what I do. I'll have to see. Uh, for now, the leadership though stays with uh, the Dane, but uh, it could change any minute. Alright, we're just gonna go through the breakaway. It's a very quick one. Um, you have Mert from Lotto Sudal. I don't know what his name is, uh, so I'm sorry. Elliot Liter for. Uh, is that is that Wallonie Bruxelles? Is that Wallonie Bruxelles? It is. When you, wait, do you say? I need I need to know that. Um, people from the French part of Belgium. Well, the one that speaks French. So, not Flanders. So Wallonie. Do you say Bruxelles or Bruxelles? Because I'm French, so technically the, that's the X, and we say, well, it's to sound X, so it should be Bruxelles. But all of us say Bruxelles, so I don't know what. How do you say Bruxelles or Bruxelles? I'm, I'm confused. Or Brussels, if you're English. Uh, yeah, I'm confused. With that in mind, we also have Logan Owen in the breakaway. Uh, 150 kilometers to go, as I said. Yeah. I'd, just having some casual discussions there, we can talk about it in the comments down below. Uh, yeah, it's it's fun, isn't it? We're, 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 we're learning things on the Black War YouTube channel. We are here educating the people. That's, that's what I do. On the third side of uh, the flesh one left to do as uh, the riders come on the Mur de Huy for the first time today. And uh, I'm just trying to see like the rhythm um, and like the heart rate. It's quite similar between Mark Hirsch and Soren Karp Anderson. Um, so I, I think I'll give the leadership to Soren. Um, yeah. Okay. I think we're gonna do like we're gonna go like that. Um, so it'll be Mark Hirsch, co-leader Soren Karp Anderson, and then we'll have Wilco Kelderman uh, and Jan Bakelans to help. Okay. Okay, the breakaway is still in the lead, 2 minutes 12 is their gap, uh, there's some riders getting dropped here and there, they'll probably come back um, as the road flattens over the next few kilometers. But yeah, no, oh, Nicholas Egg is here, is he going to win by 3 seconds again? Uh, it, that's that's a reference, oh wait, oh wait, no, you don't know that yet. Yeah. Shit, I, I may have spoiled a race. Well, anyway, you'll, you'll see later. Okay, we're going to do the Mildewy a second time. Now, however, uh, from what I've gathered over this lap and the previous lap, uh, Soren has a lot of issues trying to like do the, uh, I think it's La Côte de Cherave, like the, the climb just before this one, before the Mildewy. And that sets him in a very bad position every time. Um, so I need to be careful about that. The peloton, though, has paced a lot and then they stopped. Why is Van der Poel already in second place? Like, Matthew, mate, what's your goal? What's your aim? Uh, who, who's that? Is that Hector Carretaro? Yes, it is. He's going to stop. Evenepoel, Gord Nilsson, Kapeke. Okay, I just need... If Soren can handle the Côte de Chirave, I think I could be good. But it's going to be really hard. I don't know how I'm going to have to do that. Right, 17k to go. We're in the Côte de Ref. And uh, there's already an attack on the left. That's Hector Carretero. Jan Bakelans is going to one pacing. Is going to be the one pacing for us. Kelderman in the wheel with Mark Hirschi and Zoran Karf Anderson. Um, I'm really careful about the rhythm of uh, of Zoran. He's losing a bit more energy than Mark Hirschi, but I think it's reasonable. I I think it's reasonable. Uh, there's going to be a slight descent here. Bakelans is going to be able to uh, catch a break. Samoman as well could probably help. Uh, we're going to put Samoman in in, uh, in the group to help. Right, seven kilometers away from the Côte de Chirave, which is actually I I'm more scared about that climb rather than the Mont de Huy, uh, for some odd reason. Is that is that Julien Lafilippo? Is that uh, Remco Venable? Okay, it's Remco Venable. I just had to make sure. Kelderman in the wheel of Samoman now. Mark Hirschi and Zoran Kraft Anderson. Four kilometers to go until the Côte de Chirave. Uh, we've got three climbers. Well, two climbers, 
a hitty guy and then a, com a more complete guy. So, like, even Samum and Kaldeman, if I didn't want to win with Zorin, I could attack with, like, Omen and Kaldeman, leave Hershey and Karl Anderson leading the peloton, they'd lose, like, a few meters, I'd attack in the descent with Kaldeman, boom, win. I don't know, maybe I'm completely making this up. Uh, that's, that's all, that's a very good possibility. Samoan is going to pace down the climb, 1.4k, an average gradient of 7.7%. That's an attack from, uh, is that Yonis Aguirre? Yes, it is. Yonis Aguirre, next to Samoan, Kelderman, Marc Hirschi, Graf Anderson, Alaphilippe is there with Julien Alaphilippe, Remco Venepoel as well, is still here. Very good performance by uh, the young Belgian, who's still not overpowered in that save. Samoan has managed to put everyone back at the front. Zoran Karpansen is on a good day, uh, he's got good form and all of that, good. 3.8k. Actually, I could probably, uh, yeah, I can still follow Samoman until uh, until the line, well, until the start of the climb, should I say. Okay. Samoman steps up, steps away. Wilco Kelderman starts the Mur de Huy with Marc Hirschi in his wheel and Zoran Kraft Anderson. Julien Lafilippe already attacking from kilometer from like the very start of the climb. Is it? Uh, is, it might be a bit early for the Frenchman. It might be a bit early for the Frenchman. Marc Hirschi is the one now making the move. Soren Carfanson is losing a lot of energy in his wheel. Yeah, yeah, I'm losing too much energy. Julien Lafilippe didn't attack too early. He attacked like Julien Lafilippe would do, and he wins ahead of Valverde, Fuglesang, Davide Formol. No, Marc Hirschi. Marc Hirschi, Davide Formolo. Dan Martin, Mathieu van der Poel, Soren Carpenterson, Bob Jungels, and Wilco Kaldeman. Yeah, it's it's too hard for Zoran. It's way too hard for Zoran. Uh, I think if I'd put Hershey behind, like, if I'd removed Zoran Carpenterson from the train, I probably could have done something better with with Mark Hershey, like a podium. But uh, fourth place is a very decent result for uh, for our young uh, our young Swiss man. He didn't win the Amstel Gold race like he probably wanted to. Well. He redeemed himself on um, on the flesh wallon. He came third in the Amstel. He wins the flesh wallon ahead of a uh, veteran Alejandro Valverde, the world champion, finishing in second place. Jakob Fuglsang bringing home a third uh, position for the Astana team as Marc Hirschi and Davide Formolo complete the top five. Soren Graf Anderson ends up in eighth position, which is a decent result considering um, that he's not a good climber. You can argue that so that Van der Poel is just too good at this game. Wilco Kellerman brings home tenth uh, after having pace for quite a while. Okay, one more stages, one more classic, sorry, in this episode, and it's the the elder one. It's the, it's Liège Bastogne Liège. Final race of the episode, Liège Bastogne Liège. It's easier than uh, La Flèche Wallonne, so. I think I can win this. Jan Bakelons, Frolinger, Hirschi, Kaldeman, Kraft Anderson, Omen and Roche. It's the exact same lineup um, on all three classics. We've got a win and a fourth place. Can we leave this campaign with two wins and a fourth place? I think that'll be a uh, much, much more appreciated. No, that'll be much appreciated. There we go. It's go time for the final. Arden Classic of the Year, well, UCI Arden Classic of the Year, Liège Baston Liège, 257 km, 254 kilometers um, throughout the um, Belgian Flanders and uh, Wallonie. I don't think it goes to the Flanders. I think it's just the uh, Wallonie part of of uh, Belgium. But um, yeah, it's it's easier to win. I've never done this one though. Like I've. I don't think I've played this variant, well this variant, this new version of the of Liege, Bastogne Liege, so I I don't know how that's gonna go. Uh, I don't know if it's a sprint, I don't know if there's many corners, so we'll have to like guess how we're gonna do that. Um, from the looks of it, it looks flat, so probably a good sign for, uh, for Zorin, but yeah. 250 kilometers uh, is the last race for a lot of my riders actually before uh, a good break. Uh, I'm pretty sure like some of them are going to the Giro. Uh, I don't know who though. Maybe well, actually maybe all of them. I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember what the planning was. But um, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we can do something. Uh, if we can get a win, honestly, that's br just brilliant. 
the win would be ideal, but knowing that I don't know the finish, uh, I'll settle for a podium, I guess. Alright, we started the um, main part of Liège Bastogne Liège, the last uh, 90 kilometers, who are, uh, well, the toughest out of the race. There's still a breakaway leading uh, two minutes ahead of the peloton, constituted of Zander Armé, Louis Mentiès, and uh, Olivier Legac for Groupama FDJ. We're not at the front of the peloton right now, which is not good. Uh, we're going to try and come back though, uh, even though there's a lot of climbs right now and really narrow roads. So it's not really easy to come back at the front, but uh, we're going to give it a go. Where's Alaphilippe? Alaphilippe is next to uh, Soren Karp Anderson. Uh, Van der Poel is always really high in the peloton. Like, he's always at the front, whether there's like 10 kilometers to go or like 200. Which is quite weird. Like, I can't stay that much at the front, especially with knowing that he has absolutely no teammates. He's got v Max... no. Philippe Versleben? I think that's Philippe. Uh, but he's, oh shit, here she shit. Mark Hershey, man, you're gonna have to come back. Okay, thank you. No more breakaways. As we uh, enter the final 50 kilometers of Liège Bastogne Liège, the final fifth of the race. C'est. Uh, it, no, that's French. Wow. Uh, it's Wilco Kellerman pacing the peloton with Sam and Mark Hershey and Zoran Carvansen in the wheel as we uh, start the uh, Col du Maquisard. Uh, in my. Mind that was a very narrow road, but I could be wrong. I think I'm probably getting confused with the uh, Côte de la Redoute, which is the next climb. Um, nonetheless, we're still gonna pace. Um, there's 52 riders in the peloton. Michael Morkov just uh, got drops. He's the last, uh, the last victim of the rhythm being um, put on by Wilco Kelderman and by Felix Grossartner. Okay. For now, everything appears to be good. Uh, we're gonna get water with uh, with Wilco, and I'll see you for the Côte de la Redoute, uh, which will be the main uh, thing of the race. We're in la Côte de la Redoute. Back in the day, it used to be where all the differences were made in Liège Bastogne Liège. Right now, it's not. It's too far away from the line to make differences or well, to win. But like the Tour d'Ambert, it's where you could lose. The uh, the well, the classic. No one currently dropped, uh, but I think the rhythm is going to be hard, maybe for some riders. At least one, please. Like, don't tell me I'm going to pace for nothing. We're going to go uh, through the left hand now, on the final slopes of uh, the Côte de la Redoute. Still 47 riders in the peloton. There hasn't been a single gap made with anyone, and that's very tragic. There we go. We've dropped one. There we go. We've dropped at least nine people. Solid. Um, well, it's now going to be a false flat uh, and, well, s some hills, but nothing too much. There's only one hill, I think it's the uh, Côte de Saint-Nicolas, towards the end. Uh, but, yeah, nothing much before the line now. 30 kilometers to go, 36 riders in the peloton, 35 people able to win. Okay, final climb of the day. The uh, Côte de la roche au faucon There's been plenty of attacks in uh, the last few kilometers of this race. There goes another one. That's Julien Lafilippe. He's followed by Mathieu van der Poel and Dan Martin. Mark Hirsch is going to jump in the wheel of Mathieu van der Poel if possible. It's not a long climb so if we can hold on for like a few more meters that'd be much appreciated. Julien Lafilippe is very strong. He's dropped. Ma Dan Martin is dropped. Daniel Martin has been dropped by Julien Lafilippe. He's just on another level. He's just he's just too good. He's so good. Mark Hershey is the one trying to chase him. Vincent Zunibali attacks as well. I think he did he win near Baston Liège? I think he did. I'm pretty sure he did win it once. Hershey coming back though on Julien Lafilippe. Or at least trying to. I think that we might be able to like come back. We're gonna attack with Soren. Just to come back on Julien Lafilippe. Uh, if you would wait. Let's see if, if he can relay with me, that's great. Let's just see if he takes relays. Because there's going to be a slight descent. We have a little gap. I'm sorry about the frame rates as well. Uh, it's because there's, there's many things to load. Julien, mate, at least take a relay, honestly. Like, you're about to get first or second of Liège Bastogne Liège. Just, like, deal with it. 
Ripples is the one pacing behind. Mark Hershey is still here. Uh, Hershey is doing a solid job. Like I can go for like a nice position with Mark Hershey. Junior Lafitte in uh, his strong point, the descent. Zohan Kraft Anderson is the winner of the Amstel against the winner of La Flèche Wallonne. I don't know if anyone will come back behind. Ma uh, Nibali is doing like all he can, but I don't know if that's enough. Mark Hershey, you're going to follow um, good old um, good old Valverde. I, and I'm leading. Fuck, I forgot about that. Shit. Shit, 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 shit. Pelton's gonna come back on us as well. Uh, where are they? Where's Yashi? Uh, is it worth it for me to, like, pace 99 with Yashi now? Is it too late? We're gonna try it. We're gonna try it. We're gonna try it. Where's, where's Zorin? Alright, we're gonna launch a sprint now with Zorin Kraft Anderson. Anderson against Alaphilippe. Anderson against Alaphilippe. I don't know who's winning. I don't know who's winning. Okay, we're gonna. It, it, it's, it's gonna be a. Uh, I think it's Julian by like an inch. Oh my god. Oh my god. Look at this. Is it me? Oh, I, actually. Actually. It might well be Soren Kraft Anderson. I don't know. It's so close. I, d I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Zoran Kraft Anderson wins Liège Baston Liège ahead of Julian Lafilippe, Alejandro Elvade, Michal Ketkowski, Tim Wellens, Van Der Poel. I forgot to sprint with Mark Hirschi, but I don't, I don't really care. I don't really care. Liège Baston Liège is another classic in the bag of Zoran Kraft Anderson. He has another main classic after Milano San Remo this year. Incredible job by Zoran. Well done. Now oh, just look at him. Zoran Kraft Anderson wins Liège Baston Liège. Following his win on the Amstel Gold Race and on Milano San Remo, he, he bags a fourth classic as well because he won the Cadel Evans Gold Ocean Road Race. He bags a, f a fourth classic um, to Ed Stalli this year, making him the ultimate classic man. He wins ahead of Alaphilippe and Alejandro Valverde. Good. I love that. It wasn't easy. It really wasn't easy. The sprints had to be timed perfectly. And, well, th thankfully, it was... Alaphilippe couldn't jump Soren Kraft Anderson on the line. Valverde, Kedkowski and Tim Wallens um, failed to come back and they uh, end up uh, on 3rd, 4th and 5th respectively. Mark Hershey didn't sprint because the man had other things on his mind like pacing for Soren if I wanted to. Well, if I could, but I didn't. Uh, he finishes in a nice 13th position nonetheless. Um, yeah, the, I'm happy. I'm really happy about that. Uh, I'll, yeah. Good. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm good. I'm happy. We win the Amstel. We've won Liege Baston Liege. We've won Milano San Remo with Soren. Uh, he's just having an incredible season, this lad. Uh, but yeah, if you've enjoyed this episode, um, then please leave a like down below if there's anything you, I could have done better, like on Paris Roubaix, for example. Please tell me. Um, I'm still trying to improve. If you've enjoyed the video, leave a like down below. That would really, really help me out. Also, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. If you don't want to miss a single other episode of the Team Stone Up Career Mode, uh, the next episode will be the Tour de Romandie, and then it will be the Giro. I think uh, starting from episode 16th, it'll be uh, the Giro d'Italia. So hopefully, like you'll be there to watch it. Um, click the bell so you get notified of whenever I upload, and I'll see you for the next video. But until then, I've been Blackwall. It has been an absolute pleasure talking to you today, guys, and goodbye. Pull up, pull up in the gold, I'm leading. But them other man need feeding. I don't wanna go bombi. Them I don't know what I do when I go from feeling. Leading the pack in black and I'm on with the bad. Snapping with a phone and dab. Boss up a man with a duster. Put him in a drip and sip blockbuster.